So we've been talking about two social networks so far, Google Plus and Twitter. There's many more to talk about, but the one we'll talk about right now, which is one of the big ones, the biggest one, is Facebook. So I'm going to, let's do this, let's go to Facebook.com. Raise your hand if you've heard of Facebook.com. You and four, you and 1.49 billion other people. Uh, Facebook just released their earnings reports and stuff. Facebook is a publicly traded company, meaning you can buy uh, stock in Facebook. And at the moment, well, we can look it up actually, Facebook uh, stock at the moment is probably about $96 a share. Not super expensive like Google. You might want to look that one up. Facebook is currently $95.20 per share. And this is what it's done so far today. This is what it's done so far in the month. So it's gone up. If you bought, if you bought Facebook share when it first uh, started, it was at about $30 a share. Now it's $95 a share. So it's about three times more expensive. Um, did you know also Twitter is on the stock market? You can buy Twitter shares. At the moment, Twitter's having a bit of a rough time, and they're at $31 a share. Now, they went public on the stock market about a year after Facebook, and so they're trying to catch up and such. But really, uh, in the world of the social networks, uh, Facebook, for better or for worse, is the biggest social network you need to care about. Facebook, though, is a double-edged sword, as we'll talk about in a moment. But I like to look at stock information, and I have some investments and such. And if you look at that, oops, Twitter stock fell off a cliff this week because they, um, they, um, they, they released their, their numbers and such last week also. And it wasn't, uh, it had, they had positive aspects, but investors felt not positive enough because Twitter is being held to a very high standard, which is the Facebook standard. And Facebook is the biggest social network in the world with 1.49 billion people. The population of the Earth is, what, 6 billion, 7 billion? So a huge percentage of the world uses Facebook. And Facebook is sort of a, a, sort, sort of a runaway train at the moment. It's got a lot of momentum, a lot of inertia. You're on Facebook, your friends are on Facebook, your parents are on Facebook, your kids are on Facebook, everyone's on Facebook for better or for worse. The great thing about there being so much of people, so many people on Facebook is that you could potentially have such a large uh, target audience. <clears throat> so the great thing about Facebook is there's just so many people on Facebook. The bad thing about Facebook is there's just so many people on Facebook. <laughs> because then you're going to be a needle in a haystack. We'll talk about that. Uh, so those are two social networks. Did you know LinkedIn is also a stock you can buy? LinkedIn stock is doing well, $205 a share, as opposed to Facebook's 95 So what did it do this month? Upward. So in short, most stocks in the long term um, are profitable. Um, investing in such is a big issue. I'm not giving any advice at all. Uh, so if you lose money, don't blame me. If you if you earn money, then blame me. But this is what LinkedIn has done over this year. It's kind of been all over the place. It plateaued for a while, and then it had a big drop. But still, if you bought Facebook or uh, LinkedIn when it first debuted a few years ago at thirty dollars a share, okay, you lost some money on that day right there, but you're still what ten times richer than when you bought LinkedIn stock. Uh, Yahoo is also on there and. Yelp, all of these tech companies. So Yelp, twenty-six dollars, thirty, uh, twenty-seven dollars a share. But anyway, um, we're going to talk about Facebook because they are the the biggest social network, and as I was saying, they're a double-edged sword. Now, full disclosure, um, I don't like Facebook. I don't like Facebook on a personal level. I don't like it for for personal interactions. For business interactions, I love it. Facebook is one of the best ways to reach an audience for your business. But I don't like, on a personal level, the constant privacy snafus and the constant changing of the platform and the CEO and the people behind it and all of that. I don't like it on a personal level. But I put that aside for business and I do the best job I can for clients and I'll do the best job I can telling you about the greatness of Facebook as a business tool. 
So Facebook is very much like Google Plus in that we need people to have a personal account and then create as many business accounts as you would like. So if you've got a Facebook account, personal, you should log into it and then I'll show you how to create a business one. If you don't have a Facebook account, you need to create a personal one before creating a business one. And, and you just said, well, I thought you said you hate Facebook personally. I do, but I don't use Facebook personally. I have to create a personal account before I can create business accounts. And I don't have to do anything with that personal one. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to log in with my personal account in a moment. And then I'll show you. With my personal account, then I can create or manage as many business accounts as I want. So in the real world, my company um, gets a client that we're going to do their social media, and either myself or someone else on the team logs in with their personal account and then creates a business account and then links more managers. So I'll show you about using managers. It's not just the one person that created that Facebook business page that can access it. A hundred people can access it. They're all logging in with their personal information. That's another reason also why this is a good idea. You don't want everyone having the same login. You don't want 10 people having the same one login to the Facebook page. Because if one person gets hacked, you're in big trouble. But if everyone has their own login information, okay, one person got hacked, you can disconnect that person and they don't have access to the Facebook business page anymore. I'll show you how to do that, of course. But take a moment, if you would like, to log into your personal account, which I will here. Hopefully nothing untoward will appear here. But Facebook... Um, you've got your personal account and then you've got your business accounts. And so what you do is you log in to your personal account and at the top right corner you have this little black triangle. I'm sure it's got an official name. That little triangle there gives you a bunch of options. The most important, in my example here, use Facebook ads and these are different business pages. You might not have anything there. That's okay. I'll show you how to create a page in a moment. But the way that I do this is I log into my personal account and then I switch over to the business. And now what I'm doing is I'm managing that business page. I can post something to that business as that business. I can see statistics and all of that stuff. So just to then to switch back to personal, and it's not obvious, but the first one is my personal one go back to that. So I'm, on, I'm back on the personal. Um, how many of you currently have at least one Facebook business page? Okay, a few people. How many of you currently have a, fis, uh, a Facebook personal account? Okay, more people. So what we're going to do then is um, we're going to create the business one together. If you've already got a business page, then just hold on a moment. We're going to create a business page and then uh, we'll go on. You might also still want to create a, a business page again for, for playing with this, for learning it, for testing it, for making mistakes. You can create and delete as many business pages as you want. So it's no problem to create a test account just to do this and learn this and then delete it later. I'll show you how to delete it too. So I'm logged into my personal account. Click on the little triangle on the top right and we've got manage pages. Do you see manage pages? Click on manage pages and then on mine it shows these are all of the pages I'm managing. You can manage more than one page. You can set more than one manager. I'll show you how to do that. These are all of the pages my company is managing. So if you need to create an account, a business page, <coughs> you go to the little triangle manage page or directly create page. But here within this manage page I've got a button, create a page. So you should be on this screen, go ahead and click create a page. It asks you first, okay, 
What kind of business do you have? Very similar to Google+. Are you a local business or a place, a company, organization, institution, etc.? You can create a business. You can create a Facebook business page for anything, for a fictional character. <clears throat> Look up how many face, uh, how many Harry Potter Facebook accounts there are, um, or Justin Bieber accounts, fans, and such. So an account about anything. And so here you have to decide what kind of account you want. And it does matter which one you choose because the different pages, the different kinds of pages will have different features. For example, if you select local business or place, then it'll give you the ability, it'll give users the ability to check into your place on their device. So then someone goes to your physical location, they're on Facebook, and they can say check in. They can check in to your business. Again, why? Popularity breeds popularity. If you're physical restaurant on Main Street also has activity socially. That'll give you more activity socially, which could give you more activity in the real world. So people checking into your business is another form of marketing. If they can check into your business, they can also review your business. Facebook is trying to eat Yelp's lunch. Facebook is trying to also be a place where people can review businesses. If you didn't know that, you can review businesses on Facebook, just like Yelp. Yelp is still the, the, the bigger one um, at the moment, but it doesn't have one and a half billion users like Yelp. It could. And so if you want, if you have a business that you want people to check in and to review you, it's, it's got to be a local business or place, a physical location. You may or may not fully be able to set this up at the moment, however because it wants you to confirm a bunch of things about your business, especially your phone number. Because what's to stop me from creating a fraudulent Facebook page for my competitor down the street? Let's say I'm an Italian food restaurant and two blocks down another Italian food restaurant. So I'm gonna go create a Facebook page for them and then post that picture about that, whoops, there's a cockroach in the pasta. <laughs> well, what's to stop you from doing that? is that you have to verify you have you are the legitimate owner of that Facebook of that business in the real world for Facebook so it's gonna want to call you at your location to confirm that so you might be the legitimate owner of your physical business but you might not be able to set it up right now because Facebook is gonna robocall you to your business to confirm that with a with a code if you're not at your business to answer the phone then you can't verify. Yes? If I want to add in that um, business, I'm a business, check into the business place to an existing page? Yeah, we'll do that once we look at the settings of our business, okay. of our pages, because we can switch this. If we chose the wrong category, we can change it. I'll show you where. And if, this is what I'm saying also, many of you perhaps will want to do this, but you can't quite right now. So for the moment, you can create the company version, and that won't be as, as uh, stringent about uh, verifying you. So if you create the, the company one instead, that'll let you go forward. We can learn what we're doing, and then I'll show you later where you can change this. So if you want to change it to actually the local business, you can. So I'm not going to do local business because I can't fill this in right now. I'm going to do company, but you could also do brand or product. I, have, I had someone come in um, that um, had this product. Um, it was called WTF Wines. And the WTF in their case stood for Wine That's Fun. So Wine That's Fun. And uh, it's a product. So they chose the product. Can you choose multiple categories? Or you... Nope. Only one. Entertainment. Well, maybe you're promoting a movie. Can do that. Then you've got public figures and artists and bands. So there's many choices to choose from. Uh, you can always uh, change between them, but only one at a time. And I'll show you how to switch between them if, if you need to. I'm going to go with company. Choose a category. There's lots to choose from. Which company best suits you? So I'm going to make up, I do this all the time, I'm going to make up Victor's Bakery. So that's a bakery. Do I have bakeries here? Well, I think I've got food and beverages close enough. 
I'm going to put in a company name. My screen might look a little bit different than yours because it depends on what you choose. Happy to answer your particular question, but here's what I'm seeing. Victor's Bakery. That is not the Facebook vanity address. That is not given that is not going to give me facebook.com slash Victor's Bakery. Very much like uh, Twitter. We had the Twitter full name and the Twitter username, the at name. We choose that vanity name on another screen. And some of us might not be able to choose it right away because there's various protections in place so that spammers don't steal a name. I'll get to that in a bit. And I'm going to select Get Started. In my, ca in my case, it's asking me for four things to fill out. It's asking me for a description. Tell people what your page is about. I have 155 characters to work with. This is uh, one of the ways that people will find your page because Facebook has built into it search. This is not a Google search. This is search inside Facebook. Whatever you search here will only give you results from Facebook, not from the rest of the web. That's why Google was scared of that and made Google+. Plus. They want their own social network for people to hang out in and search in and look at Google products. Because Facebook has a search feature that can keep people in Facebook all day long and never venture out to the web because they can play the game all day long on Facebook, they can chat with their friends all day long, they can do everything they need to on Facebook uh, without venturing outside. So if you type stuff here, up to 155 characters, to help customers find you, that would be useful. What do I type? Well, that's why I gave you that document, that marketing document. That marketing document is supposed to help you define a variety of aspects about your business. So if you have that filled in, that can help you start to fill in your social media profiles, biographies and such. So I'm going to write here, San Diego based family owned bakery in the heart of, well, if I say San Diego, then why would I say Eastlake, but San Diego based, California based, family owned bakery in the heart of Eastlake. Our traditional recipes are GMO and good for you. I'm trying to answer the why. I have 155 characters and another opportunity here to answer why would someone buy my product? Why would someone follow me on Facebook? Why would someone care? So I'm saying a little bit about here in terms of keywords. California, bakery, Eastlake. <clears throat> someone is searching for those things on Facebook, they might find my business. Then I'm also putting in a bit of the why. Well, we've got traditional recipes. I'm going to appeal then to the people that like tradition. Later on throughout the site, I can explain what does tradition mean. Well, these are the old world recipes from my grandma uh, from Germany. So traditional. And then I've got the keyword there, non-GMO. I'm trying to target that audience. My persona that I've created are young families you know, young, young, young families that have young kids that care about feeding them the, the best, you know, trendiest foods of non-GMO, vegan, gluten-free, um, fair trade, organic, blah, blah, blah. So that's what I'm going to be targeting. That's my persona. And then a little bit of that hyperbole within reason, of course, of marketing and ethics and all of that. Good for you and your wallet. So I have some space there. If you previously set up your business page and you didn't write that or write it as effectively as you could have, I'll show, of course, where to edit that after I'm done creating the page. Um, but I'm going to then add here my business website, victorsbakery.com, because at the moment, and I said this about the other networks, 
these social networks are great and you might have a thousand likes and 5,000 Twitter followers and 10,000 Google Plus views. That's great, but you cannot sell any of your products on the social networks at the moment. You still have to sell on your website. So I'm going to direct them back to my website here, as well as in the posts that I will post. But I'll get to that later. In my case, I then get choose a unique Facebook web address, and, it, and I can type the web address. Some of you might not have that right away, as I said. One possible reason that I can do this right away is because I have been using Facebook for business for a few years now, and therefore Facebook has vetted me that I can create business pages and claim a name right away. If this is your very first Facebook page, it says, who is this person? Who are we giving this address to? So you probably have then the restriction of getting, usually it's 30 likes before being able to claim your name. So if it's not letting you claim your name right away, most likely you have to get 30 likes. Sometimes it's 25. They change the algorithm all the time. But uh, 25 to 30 likes before you can claim your name. Mine is letting me claim a name. I'm not going to because I don't want to take someone's name. This is just a, a test account. And if you put your name there, if it lets you put the name, you should put the name. The thing is, though, you can only change it once, I believe. So if you misspelled it now and you fix the spelling, you've changed it the, two, the total two times, so you cannot change it more than that. Um, and I've had to deal with that with clients that... Uh, Someone made a Facebook page for them before, but they didn't make it effectively because they didn't quite know what they were doing. So my company came in and had to change the name. It got changed, and now if, we wanted, if the client wants to change it later, they can't. Only one change on the name. So I'm not going to save a name here, but you could if you want to. Save info. I'm on step two. Choose a profile picture, your logo, whatever. I don't have it handy, but I'm going to do that as soon as I can. As I said previously with Twitter and Face and Google Plus, you want to add, you want to fill in your profile as much as possible so that you don't look like just another generic fly by night spam account. Yes? If you were to set the name, would you put Victor's name? On the Facebook name? Right. Yeah, I can put Victor. That's the place where you would put your that's where I would put Victor's bakery. But I can't put Victor's bakery. I can't use special characters. Apostrophes, exclamation points. I believe I can use dashes. It'll tell me if I can't when I submit. I believe I can do dashes. I don't believe you can do underscores. I may be wrong. It may just be very, very simple words and numbers. <clears throat> so you're going to add your company's logo as soon as you can, uh, a high-quality version of it. Um, that will look good on the on the desktop, on the laptop, on the mobile device for identification. I don't have one, so I'll add it later. Then mine says number three, add to favorites. Usually I skip this. I don't see much much value to this. What this is doing is, what this is telling you is when you log into your personal account, on the left side, you're going to have a column of favorites. And it's going to say, here's your news feed, your events, whatever. And then it says, you can add your company to your favorites. And I don't like that because I know that it's happened at least once to me that I log into my personal account, I click on my company from my favorites, thinking that I'm going to post something to my business as my business. But actually, I posted to my business as my personal account. Even worse, I logged into a client's business account, and I posted mm -hmm. as Victor to that client's account by going this route of the favorites. I think they fixed that, but I'm still paranoid. So I'm going to show you a better and more effective way to always be sure that you are posting as the business on the business. So I just skip this one here. Yes. I don't see the other favorites in my setup screen. If you don't, that's okay. I'm not even going to use it, and I don't recommend it. So I'm not going to add to favorites. I I will show you the better way that I recommend. But so I'm going to skip that. It's happened at least once, and that's enough for me. It's too many times. 
so I'm not going to do that. Then you should get number four, preferred page audience. This was not available probably six months ago, maybe a year. This is very recent. So if you created your Facebook business page a year ago, you didn't have this. I'll show you where to edit this if you set yours up a while ago. This is brand new. Again, about targeting. This is why I gave you that document to start to think about your target audience because Facebook is thinking about it. Other social networks are thinking about it. Tell us about the people you'd like most to connect with. Anyone can find your page, but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who matter to you most. So this is new and this is cool. Um, I'm trying to get this target audience to, see, to find my page, to see my page, to like my page. <coughs> I'll explain the importance of likes in a moment. But this will help target my page to people. So let's see, we've got locations. Since this is new, can you go back and add this? What's that? Since this is new, can you go back and add this? Yes, that's what I said a moment ago. We'll go back and we'll show everyone where this, has, where this is if your page didn't have this. Let's see, location include, exclude. Maybe your product shouldn't be at a certain location and such. We've got add a country, state, province, city, zip, or DMA. I don't know what a DMA is. Um, let's say I want to target the people in 91913 and 92154. There we go. So I'm targeting those two locations. I can then put in a city. and within a radius. So La Jolla, 25 miles. Just a little overlaps there. But maybe I want to target it just to La Jolla environs instead of 25 whole miles. So you can put as many as you want, but then you get to the point that you're diluting your message. If you have a pet shop, you can target a variety of animals. So if you have a pet shop that specializes in cats, well, you're targeting cats. And uh, here, I'm specifying in the locations of these three locations. Maybe I've got a shop in those three locations. Maybe I've got one shop. Uh, but it's up to you to decide how specific you want to be. I can't exactly tell you how specific to be, but I feel more than three locations is getting too broad, especially if they're overlapping with 10 and 15 and 25 miles. What's the point having three locations if they're all overlapping? So up to three, I would say. I really usually do this uh, one or two, but I would say up to three locations. Yes. Question. If you set it up um, today and you choose later to make changes to it, does that hurt your page in any way? Is that really the blank and clean decision? No, it, it, would, it would help you at the moment because you're reaching a certain audience at the moment, and as you fine tune that audience, well, you'll get an even more, you'll get an even better audience because now you've fine tuned. So I, I would set it up now and then fine tune it if you need to later. Yes. If, you're, if you're looking for an international, um, Customer, would you just leave a blank and you would do it internationally? Or? Nope, because that's not targeting enough either. Are you sure really internationally? Are you really going to reach every country? Or are you going to do Canada, USA, and Mexico? Right? International, sure, but really, are you going to be shipping over to Madagascar? So you should still try to target countries. You can change this, of course. So maybe at the moment, start off with your largest, if you know this data, your largest current target of, of, of sales. And then what's the second one, and or what, are, what are ones you're trying to reach? Yes? Yeah, by putting in certain zip codes of the target uh, market, are you restricting the other areas from being able to interact with you? Nope, you're still, it says up here, anyone can find your page. 
but we'll do our best to put it in front of the people who matter to you most. So it's going to be targeted more to those people, but still anyone can find your page, anyone can like your page, anyone can interact with you. It's just that Facebook will use its power and its algorithm to try to show you to those people that care about what you've defined here most. So one thing is just location. There's other things here too. Everyone in this location, and you can go here, people who live in this location, people who recent, people recently in this location, people traveling. How does Facebook know this? It knows this because everyone is using Facebook and filling in every single thing every time of day and answering the question when you log in, what are you doing today? That's not just it being nice to you, that's it gathering information about you. That's why on a personal level I don't like Facebook. It asks for a lot of information. But for you it's great because you're going to find the, this audience that really cares about your product. So maybe people traveling in this location. When, whenever you visit some place, you visited the Louvre, and then you were on Facebook and you wrote, visited the Louvre. Great, Facebook knows that, and now a marketer can target to you. Which is good for you, but maybe not good for you. So I'm just going to say, everyone in this location, age ranges, well, this is my bakery, and as I said, my persona is I'm targeting young families. So uh, I suppose 18 and up, but we'll say 20 and up, 20 to 35. On that one, you cannot, however, choose multiple age groups. That one is one age group. You can have it very broad, and that's fine, or target it down, which is better, because again, you should have a target audience you're going for. Your target, your target audience, your answer to that question, who's your target audience, should never be everyone because that's false, literally. You are targeting an, an audience that cares about something. Um, or you should think that you figure that out. Gender, yeah, men and women, fine. Or you can just do just men, just women. And then another great thing to target here, interests. Add the interests of the audience you want most to connect with. Facebook can help you connect with specific audiences by looking at their interests, activities, and pages they have liked and closely related topics. Again, you can add 40 of these if you want. You're diluting your message. Up to three is a good target. So interests. If I click, I have all of these categories. Remember when we filled out in the beginning the business, it asked, what kind of business are you? I chose food and drink. Well, that shows up here as well, and it gives you raw numbers. People that are into business and industry, these are people, there's about 2.7 million that have chosen that in entertainment, 542 million and 6 million for family and so forth. So let's say under food and drink, 4.6 million. And I can also fine tune that. Food and drink, alcoholic beverages, beverages, cooking, cuisine, food, restaurants. Let's see what's under food. Barbecue, chocolate, fast food, veganism, etc. Let's say, yeah, I want to target vegans. My my food is vegan friendly. My baked goods are vegan friendly. I can search around there. Or I can also type the words. Let's see what happens with baking. There is baking also. And it also will show you things that are not exactly in... If you do the search, instead of going with suggestions, it will also search for you here concepts that are not within the suggestion box. So for example, proofing which is a baking technique. That's not found in that drop-down list. Uh, but anyway, baking, and that's got 81 million people that are into that, that have liked that. So I'm going to do three here that I think would uh, be effective for my, for my business. And I don't have to be targeting all three of those to food and drink. I saw there also family. I'm interested in that also. Family. So we get suggestions and we get browse. Suggestions are based on what you've been adding here. It might also suggest other things like flavor, fasting, etc. Um, and then you've got browse. And then I can go back here, family and relationships. Um, 
parenting. So I've got three. I can change these later. Again, if you don't see this screen because you've already got a page, I'll get back to that page in just a moment. But I've added some um, preferred audience, a target audience. Yes, go ahead. Uh, this map has drop pin in the bottom right. Should we be clicking on that? <clears throat> Sometimes the location that you're trying to choose doesn't quite show up in the box up there. So if you really want to target like the people way over here that live by this lake, you can say, okay, I'm going to target those people. Gotcha. Thank you. And then it puts it in in coordinates. You can remove a pin by clicking on it and going to oops, going to it and clicking remove. Yes? Is it just something that you have to fill out uh, on the zip codes? Because what's confusing me is that I understand if you have a bakery or a storefront mm -hmm. where someone wants to come in and you want to get those that geographical audience. But if you have something that you're strictly doing online where you don't have people coming in, mm -hmm. Um, you would still just need to put your tar your target uh, zip location, even though you're not. No, no. If let's say I am an author, mm -hmm. so I want everyone to read my book. Okay. Well, my book is in English, so am I going to target my book in France? No. So I can exclude France, for example, or I could say, okay, yeah, I'm a, I'm writing in English, but I'm going to be targeting United States. I want you. I want a United States audience. So you can still do it by country okay. or by state. It doesn't okay. have to be as specific as zip code. Okay. All right, so I'm going to save that. I can always edit it later, and then it gets me to my uh, it gets me to my page. And if this is a brand new page, you might get a pop up that says like the page. Show support for the work you've done by setting up of setting up your page by liking it. When people visit your page, they will see that at least one person has been here before. So if you don't like your own page, this page will have zero likes. Popularity breeds popularity. So if at least it's got one like, that's you're on your way. So make sure you like your own page. Now this is the confusing part about, about Facebook, and this is what I said about don't, don't worry about putting your Facebook page on your favorites, because right now I am logged in as my personal account, even though I'm looking at my business page, and even though it looks like I can add stuff to my business page. I'm wary of that. It shows my personal icon there instead of my business icon. So I want you to get into the habit of wh whenever you log in, or if you don't know if you're on personal or business, get into the habit of clicking on the little triangle at the top right and switching to the account. It used to be, just maybe like a month ago, that you could scroll quickly through all of your business pages. Here there was a little scroll bar. For whatever reason, they took that out, and now I have to click on See More, and then find the page, and then click Login. You used to be able to go to it directly from that little drop-down. All 20 pages, I could just scroll, find it, click. Now they've got an extra two, two clicks in there for some reason. Um, but anyway, you want to either click it from your menu. If you've only got one page, it's the only thing that shows up. I've got multiple pages. So I have to then click on Manage. What's it called again? Manage pages? Uh, see more. I have to click on see more, and then I find the right page. Let's see. Victor's Art. Victor's Bakery. Where did my Victor's Bakery page? Show your personal and the page you just 
on the job form. It only shows this and it just Yes. Um, well, you have to be sure. Uh, for example, on mine, it shows me. You see, just try to switch back and forth between. Them. Sometimes it wakes it up, but I'm on my personal account, and then it's showing me the business account. If I go to the business account, it's on the business, and then the first one is the personal. So if it doesn't look exactly how it's supposed to, switch between the two. It doesn't show anything but the business page I just created, even though I'm logged into my personal. Okay, let me take a quick look. So you have to make sure you're on your you're on your business page. And now my icon of the business page is there. That's how I'm sure that I'm editing what I think I'm And so I'm on my business account. And if you've already set up a, um, an account, a, a business account before, you might already already have all of this filled in. But again, a lot of us don't, so I'm going to talk about filling it in and such. But what I'm going to show is, before I get too much further, I'm going to show the screen about um, the target audience that people are asking. If they've already got their own, if you've already got your own business page, but you haven't set your target audience like I did a moment ago, let me show you where that's at. I have to remind myself also, it's in one of the many screens of settings. Well, here's one thing, first of all. Um, we're going to look at the settings in a moment, but I'm in, I'm in the screen here of my page. I have that timeline and about. Click on about. So there's an about button right there. This is one of those screens where you can fill in some of this about information. And this is that screen where you can change your category. Right there. So if you chose the wrong category, you can edit that category. And then the target. I'm going to explain these in a, in a moment, but your target, where is the target? All right, here it is. So uh, I'm going to explain the anatomy of the page in such in a moment, but just to very quickly for some of you to do this that you didn't have it before. I'm looking at my, my page, my business page. You've got settings near the top right corner. Settings near help, click on settings. And then on the left, one of the sections of settings is preferred page audience. That's that screen that we set up a moment ago. So if you set yours up a year ago, you didn't have that screen, you can get to it this way, preferred page audience. This is exactly what I filled in just a few moments ago. It's under settings, and then preferred page audience. Page audience in my left hand column. Okay, we're gonna take a break in just a moment, and then we can we can see that. But make sure you're also in your business page. So I'm on my business page. Confirm that you're on your business page. So um, those are two things you want to look at at the moment. We're gonna take our second break in just a moment. Um, and then I'll go back and talk more about these settings. Yes, we'll talk about posting and advice on posting and all of that, but I want to talk about various important settings of your business page, especially if you set it up a year ago, because things change. 
So it's 11.17, we'll take one more break. Uh, we'll be back at 11.27. What you should do at the moment is look at your settings, preferred audience, or look at your about to make sure your category is correct. I'll turn the printer back on if you'd like to print anything. We'll take a short break. If you need any help, call me over.